Hello everyone! The story of Illidan's Storm Rage is a big one and part of his story, the War of the Ancients, has been altered by time travel. That means that some events changed, so we have multiple versions of a story, so I've been asking around and apparently the recollection of the War of the Ancients trilogy is the version best to go with. So to understand the story, let me first explain how the trilogy begins. Sometime after Warcraft 3, the Bronze Dragon Nosdormu got caught in a time anomaly and it took everything of his power to save the world from being destroyed by this vortex. This meant that he was trapped and he desperately made contact with the Red Dragon Coriostras, also known as Kresis, and he sent them visions of what was going on and that he needed help. Kresis realized that he would need some help with this mission, so he recruited his old friend Ronan to help him out. This time anomaly did not go unnoticed and even the Horde realized that something was going on. A shaman named Kalfar, he told Thrall about a vision he had and Thrall sent Bruxigar together with Gaskal to investigate the situation. As the orcs made their way they saw a dragon in the sky and they expected that this had something to do with the visions so they decided to follow it. What they didn't know was that this would lead them straight to the anomaly which by this time had turned into a massive vortex. Ronan and Kresses they were already sucked up by it and slowly it made its way towards Bruxigar. Bruxigar told his companion to run but Gaskal decided decided to hide between the rocks and the outside of the vortex utterly destroyed him. Bruxigar did all he could to run away but he too was sucked up and sent back 10,000 years into the past. To a time where Queen Ajar and the Highborn ruled the Night Elves and were dabbling with magic beyond their understanding. This magical power was granted to them by the Well of Eternity and by messing around with it they drew the attention from the Burning Legion and their master Sargeras himself. Sargeras wanted to come to Azeroth to conquer it, like he had conquered many planets before and Azara was exhilarated. She saw the coming of Sargeras as a way to make the world as perfect as she was and she was willing to do anything necessary to make this happen. Her advisor Xavius was the one who had made first contact with Sargeras and he was put in the task to empower the portal and get Sargeras to Azeroth. That's the background of the story and this brings us to Illidan. Illidan Stormrage, twin brother of Malfurion Stormrage, grew up together with his brother Antron, a Whisperwind, in the Night Elf Society. Illidan, unlike his brother, was born with amber eyes and at the time this was seen by the Night Elves as a sign that a person was destined for greatness. Even with these eyes, Illidan had a lot of trouble finding his destiny, while Tyrande the Whisperwind, their longtime friend, she had found her calling with the Priest of a Loon. Even his brother Malfurion had found his destiny under the teachings of the demigod Cenarius, who showed him the way of the Druids. Illidan tried to follow the same path, but he never had the patience for it. He preferred the ancient way of his people, the way of the arcane, powers granted to the Night Elves by the Well of Eternity. Kresses, Ronan and Broxigar entering this time period did not go unnoticed. Xavius had his troops scout for Ronan and Kresses, while Broxigar was captured by the Moon Guards, placed in a cage and put on display until the Elders had decided what to do with him. Tyrande saw Broxigar in his cage and she saw that food had been given to him, but someone his size surely would require more substance. The guards told her that there was no order given to feed a prisoner and that it was a bad idea, but Tyrande, she believed that giving food or a drink should not require an order. Illidan saw her giving this food to Brox and talking with him and he laughed. Out. He shot a spell that burned the flesh from Broxigar's fingers, since Illidan thought that Tyrande was in danger. This was not the case of course, Broxigar could hardly move in his cage and Tyrande was pissed. She told Illidan to turn around and step away so she could heal Broxigar's fingers. Elune granted her this gift, she healed the wounds but doing this left her drained. She told Illidan that she would rejoin her sisters and she left him behind. Now it was Illidan who was pissed. For hours he had waited outside the temple to talk with Tyrande, to tell her about his feelings for her and his moment was ruined. He became so angry that Broxigar's cage flared red and the orc began to scream in pain. Luckily Illidan managed to regain control and he removed his spell that he had cast and it was even more fortunate that the guards had protected Broxigar's cage with their own spells. If they hadn't done that, then Illidan's fury would have slain the orc. 
Melfiorin's training as a druid, as well as having strange dreams about the palace, hadn't believed that something was up, that something was going on and it wouldn't be for the better of their people. When Tyrande showed him Brox and Brox told him his story, he realized that Brox coming to their world had something to do with his dreams and what was going on at the palace. The elves would interrogate Broxigar the very next day, so Melfurion had to act fast to get the orc free. He asked his brother for help and Illidan agreed, although Melfurion believed that it wasn't really to help his twin brother, but most Mostly because Tyrande had asked him. Illidan could never refuse Tyrande and he used his magic to unlock the cage and free the orcs from his chains. They planned on leaving Illidan and Tyrande behind so that they couldn't be blamed for the orcs escape. But things didn't go exactly as planned. Lord Ravencrest, master of Blackrock Hold, he was on a mission to find Broxigar and bring him back. He recognized Illidan and he knew that Illidan had studied the art of magic, but he was not part of the Moon Guards. This meant that he was not restricted by the oaths that all Moon Guards have to take and that he could be loyal to Ravencrest, so he asked Illidan if he would be willing to join him on this hunt. In truth, Illidan could hardly refuse an order from such a high standing lord, but helping him could endanger his own brother. Nonetheless, Illidan joined with a plan to please Ravencrest while at the same time keeping his brother out of jail. Being noticed by such a high lord as Ravencrest is a big deal and Illidan wanted to prove himself. He got that shot when they came across a group of butchered night elves. Unknown to them was that the Hound Master Rakhar had sent his own fell hounds to hunt. Fell hounds are capable of draining magic out of living beings and the hounds that had taken out this group, they were still around. One of them attacked Ravencrest, disarmed him and was about to take his life, but Illidan used his magic to enchant the blade and kill the demon. This earned him praise from Ravencrest and as they returned to town, Illidan was full of pride about his achievements. He thought that he had finally found his destiny serving Ravencrest and he was so excited to tell his story that he didn't see Toronto's horror and fear as he told about the dead bodies they'd found. He kissed Tyrande's hands and he told her that he wanted to be worthy of her, and soon he would be. What happened next was that Melfurin and Broxigar they reached Melfurin's teacher Cenarius, and there they teamed up with Ronan. Cressus had earlier been teleported away to his fellow dragons, so he didn't join this little group. As they planned to travel to Melfurion's house, they were surrounded by night elves, captured, taken to Ravenhold, where they infiltrated Melfurion's mind and extracted the truth. They saw his visions, his dreams, his doubts towards the queen, but they simply couldn't believe it. They loved their queen Azura so much that they just flat out refused to believe that she would do anything to hurt them. Instead, they laid the blame at the Highborn and her advisor Savius, who they'd never trusted. The Night Elves took up arms and they prepared to rescue their queen, while at the palace they were still trying to summon Sargeras. They had managed to summon lesser demons, but for some reason the portal just wouldn't get strong enough. It was Queen Azura who came up with the idea to seal the Well of Eternity from all the other Night Elves and focus its powers on the portal. This left the Moon Guard and all the other Night Elves nearly powerless, but Illidan was still capable of casting spells while Ronan nearly didn't feel the effect at all. He was from a different time period, so he knew how to draw magic out of the world itself, and Illidan was drawn to him. Malfurion had Cenarius as his Shando, his teacher, and now Illidan had found Ronin to take him to the next level of his craft. Now in order to even have a fighting chance against the Legion, Malfurion realized that he would have to destroy the portal and open the Well of Eternity to the rest of his people. He used the Emerald Dream to infiltrate the palace and he did his best, but Xavius had magical eyes, eyes capable of seeing Malfurion even in the Emerald Dream. He captured Malfurion's spirit in a magical bottle while they continued to work on the portal. The Night Elves, led by Ravencrest, they fought valiantly against the demons, but the Moon Guard were not up to the task. Illidan saw how their leader was foolishly spreading their power while he thought that they should just focus what little magic they had and direct it into powerful spells. He took command of the Moon Guard, had them placed in a position to amplify their magic, and he did terrible damage to the demons. Dark tentacles slashed them in two, the earth beneath their feet rumbled, and several burst into flames. Illidan looked to Ronin for his approval and Ronan gave him a nod, but he realized that he would have to keep an eye on Illidan. Illidan had great potential, but his recklessness was a trap that could create of him a danger in its own way as deadly as the Burning Legion. Ronin would try to do his best to guide Illidan and make sure that his great deeds would be for the greater good. While they were fighting the Legion, Malfurion was still trapped. 
Cressus had found his way back to Broxigar and Taronda while they were guarding Malfurion's body. He made contact with Malfurion's spirit and told him to find a possible weakness that he could exploit and use to escape. Malfurion had already searched for such a weakness of course, but he had been unable to find it. Now he had Cressus backing up a dragon, so he searched around, saw a minor crack in the spell and he used it to escape. He then faced off against Xavius himself and by combining his strength with Cressus, Broxigar, Taronda, Azeroth itself, he managed to defeat the High Counselor and open up the well. This action did not only empower the magic wielders, all Night Elves were connected to the well and as its powers were released, they were invigorated. A final push set the demons on the retreat, but they didn't have enough strength left to push them back to the capital. For leading the Moonguard, Illidan was made the official leader and although the day had been won, the war was far from over. The day was won by the Night Elves, but the portal was restored and Sargeras was pissed about their failure. He had already sent two powerful minions, Hakar and Manorov, but apparently that wasn't enough. It was time to bring out the big guns, so he sent his Lieutenant Archimonde to lead the army and get him to Azeroth. Xavius was destroyed by Malfurion near the portal and his spirit was taken by Sargeras. Failing the master does not come without a price and it felt like Xavius had felt endless agony. However, Sargeras can also grant second chances and he decided to improve and reform Xavius. Piece by piece he reformed the former Highborn creating the first of the Seder set on a mission to convert more to be like him and to serve Sargeras. At the Night Elf camp, they kept on fighting the Legion as they were trying to reach Zinazari and their queen. One moment they were pushing the Legion back, at another moment they were pushed back themselves. Cressus realized that they simply needed more help, so he wanted to reach the dragons. Together with Malfurion, they flew away on griffins, while the dragons themselves already had the plan to save the world. Nelfarion the Earth Warden had convinced his fellow Aspects to surrender a portion of their power and placed it within the Dragon Soul. It is done. All have given that which must be given. I now seal the Dragon Soul forever. That terrible glow. Should that be? For it to be as it must, yes. It is a weapon like no other. It must be like no other. With this powerful device, they could rid the world of the Legion, but what they didn't know was that Nelfarion was listening to the whispers of the old gods. They had made him paranoid and convinced him that he couldn't trust anyone and that he should rule the world. With Malfurion away, Illidan realized that Tyrande should be his. His brother's actions had made it clear that he wasn't capable of protecting Tyrande like Illidan could. With his crazy ideas of preferring nature over good old magic, and Illidan tried to convince Tyrande to choose him. But Tyrande had already made her choice. She loved Malfurion, and she was appalled by Illidan's words. How could he speak about his brother in such a way after everything Malfurion had done for them? Disappointed, insulted and ashamed, Illidan stepped away and he tried to make peace with Tyrande's choice. But Xavius wouldn't let him. From the shadows he whispered to Illidan dark thoughts about how life could be if Malfurion was gone. How Illidan and Tyrande could be together if perhaps something during the battle would happen to his twin. Never. Not my brother. Never. At first, Illidan is disgusted by his own dark thoughts, but the seeds of doubt were planted and Xavius knew that he had Malfurion's brother. Illidan resumed command of the Moonguard and as the battle raged on, he became more and more careless with his spells. In his recklessness, he finally slipped up and he killed his own people. Ronan saw this happen with his own eyes and he was about to confront Illidan about this, but up in the sky, the dragons had arrived. At first, it looked like Nelfarion's plan worked wonders, since the powers of the Dragon Soul decimated the Legion's lines. But then, his madness took over. He used the disc not only against the demons, but also against the Night Elves and even his fellow dragons. Using the Demon Soul, as they would now start to call it, did not come without a price, and Delphine's madness started to show on the outside. This forced him to retreat and fix himself, while the Legion and the Night Elves, they had the pleasure of fighting over who would serve him in his new world. This attack brought chaos to the battlefield and Tyrande found herself stuck between her allies and the enemy. Malfurion dragged her away to a safer spot, only to stand face to face with his old enemy, Xavius. 
During all this chaos, Ronan was commanded by Ravencrest to seize command over the Moon Guards. Illidan was killed, but they needed order at this moment, not the mayhem that he unleashed. Ronan told Illidan to step away, and of course this was extremely insulting. And to add more salt to the wound, he told Illidan to make contact with his brother. Illidan had believed that his destiny was to be together with Tyrande, but that had proven false. Then he thought that serving Ravencrest was his fate, but again he was mistaken. Now he had to figure out where exactly he belonged, but first he did what Ronan asked of him. He made contact with his twin, who was in the middle of a battle with Xavius. Xavius taunted Malfurion, told him how he had manipulated Illidan by using the little love triangle, and Malfurion was shocked by this. He had not realized that Tyrande had chosen him, and the shock was so great that for a moment he forgot about Illidan. Illidan heard Malfurion's thoughts and the dark thoughts his jealousy took over. Despite Tyrande about to be kidnapped by the satyrs, despite his own twin brother pleading with him to help him, Illidan disconnected himself from Malfurion's minds and left them to their fates. Tyrande would be kidnapped despite Malfurion turning Xavius into a tree and his grief over Tyrande unleashed his potential powers hidden deep inside. A massive torrential storm forced the Legion to back off while Illidan, he captured one of the fell beasts, turned it into his mount and rode off to the palace. If he didn't belong with Tyrande, if he didn't belong with Ravencrest, then perhaps his destiny could be found by allying with the Highborn, the Queen and the Burning Legion. Illidan made his way to the palace, killing any demon that dared to stand in his way. They've never gone into details as to how Illidan got his hands on the twin blades of Azenov, but if I had to place it somewhere in the story, then this would be the moment. What we do know for certain is that Illidan he fought with a doom guard called Azenov, won the battle and took his blades. When Illidan finally arrived at the palace, he didn't come empty handed. He had knowledge and he had power. First, he strengthened the portal and he made contact with Sargeras. His plan was to track the demon soul with a black dragon scale that he picked up from the battlefield and they would use the artifact to strengthen the portal and bring Sargeras into Azeroth. News of the devastating power unleashed on the battlefield had reached even Sargeras and he saw how this plan could work. As a reward for Illidan's loyalty, Sargeras granted him a gift. Something that will mark him as being loyal to Sargeras, while also helping him with this mission. The soft tissue was seared instantly. Illidan's screams echoed throughout the chamber and likely well beyond the palace walls. All trace of arrogance had left his expression. There was only agony, pure and unadulterated. Illidan fell to the floor and Sargeras told Manoroth to have Illidan sent to rest and when he was rested he began his task to get the demon soul. Manoroth still didn't trust Illidan and Sargeras he was no fool. He told Vadofen, captain of the high guard, to join Illidan and make sure that the night elf fulfilled his mission. When Illidan woke up, he found himself in the presence of three beautiful highborn females and one of them was Lady Vush. She was busy with washing him and she offered him a blindfold to cover his new eyes. When Illidan tried to look at the world for the first time, he almost went mad. Bright colors and shapes attacked him, but he remembered Ronan's words that focus is the key, so Illidan used his willpower and forced himself to see. The mark granted by Sargeras gave him new sight and he could now see the magic in the world. He had also gained dark tattoos which amplified his powers and he could see how powerful the highborn around him were. Lady Vush was the most powerful among them, but she was nothing compared to Queen Azara. Illidan always imagined that Azara had need of her highborn to do magic for her, but as she entered the room he could see that he was wrong. She had not become queen just with her looks, Azara was powerful in her own right. She'd even tried to hypnotize Illidan with her magic as she had done with so many others before him, but Illidan saw what she was doing and he resisted. Together with Varofen, he went on his mission to collect the demon soul, while Malfurion and the rest of the resistance, they realized that they wouldn't stand a chance unless the dragons returned to help. The dragons could not risk showing themselves in public, as long as Deathwing held the demon soul, so Malfurion entered the Emerald Dream once again. In the dream, he was able to find Deathwing, and the location where he was hiding the demon soul. Despite all odds, Malfurion and the rest actually managed to get their hands on the disc, but outside they were captured by Illidan and Varofen. Illidan managed 
to get his hands on the disc, but he lost his brother and Brox since they were saved by Coriolstras. This was just a minor victory though, since Illidan still had the demon soul and he delivered it to Sargeras. There was a bit of a debate as to who would actually wield the disc to amplify the portal, and this part was crucial for Illidan's plans. Illidan was actually a double agent, trying to save the world by turning the portal into a maelstrom, which would suck all the demons from Azeroth and stop the Legion's invasion. To do this, he would have to be the one to wield the disc. But Sargeras had other plans. He himself would create the portal which would allow him to conquer the planets and he told them to bring the disc to the well of eternity itself. For the first time Illidan's confidence in himself and in his plan diminished slightly but not all was lost. He could still manipulate the portal but something unexpected happened before he had the chance. Several highborn did not agree with Azara's choices and they didn't believe that bringing Sargeras into our world was for the greater good. In secret they had been working against their queen weakening the portal and now they had decided to break Tyrande out of her prison and join the resistance. Led by Daframar Sunstrider they charged out of the palace but Tyrande was picked up from her mount by a doomguard. High in the sky she managed to grab her sword and stab the demon which released her from his grasp but also had her plummeting to the ground. She would have probably died in that very moment was it not for Illidan who used his magic to save her life. He told her about his plans, he showed her one of the vials that he had filled with power from the well and he poured the vast magical powers over himself. Wait, I have an idea. Illidan, what is in that vial? What are you doing? What our people could not. Yes. yes. I can feel the raw power of the will of eternity. This is time to end this charade. This was strictly forbidden, not even the Highborn would have dared to do this, but Illidan saw himself better than them. He tried to manipulate the portal, tried to fulfill his plans, but a dark aura surrounded him. The old gods, who actually wanted Sargeras to enter our world so that they could escape, they guided Illidan's spell work and empowered the portal. Tyrande desperately tried to warn him, but Illidan had placed a spell on her, which prevented her from talking, so the damage was done. The portal was not reversed, instead it was amplified, and Sargeras was dead much closer to set foot on land. In the meantime, the dragons they showed up again and they carried Malfurion and the others to the Well of Eternity. Bruxigar sacrificed himself to buy them all some time, while Deathwing showed up and tried to reclaim his item. Like I said, the old gods wanted this to happen, so they did everything in their power to stop Deathwing from getting his paws on the disc. It is too powerful! How dare you touch my creation! It is mine! Mine! Nelvarian! What have you done? You have doomed us all to the madness of the it old gods! Is mine! He is lost to our system. He is no The power of the soul no is tearing him apart! I will not be denied! Despite the spell nearly tearing him apart, Deathwing manages to get his paws on the disc only to be slapped by the old gods. He loses his grip on the artifact, is sent far away while the disc is caught by Malfurion. Malfurion then makes a mental connection with Tyrande, and when he found out that Illidan was near her, he nearly killed his brother in a moment of fury. He quickly regained control though, and soon enough Illidan and Tyrande were under attack by demons. Malfurion could sense this of course, he could see it through Tyrande's mind, but he was sitting on top of Yasira, so there was nothing he could do. Desperately he wished to be there to help them, and before he knew it, the power of the demon soul made it so. Simultaneously he was sitting on top of Yasira together with Illidan, while also being down on the ground fighting demons with Illidan and Tyrande. He knew that they had to do something about the portal, otherwise all would be lost, so together with Illidan they become one with the foul disc, and they try to manipulate the portal. Old gods are not easily defeated, and they whispered through the disc trying to manipulate them. Melfurion almost fell to the whispers, but he quickly regained control, while Illidan completely surrendered to the promises of the gods. 
Lords. His brother Malfurion managed to snap him out of it, and together they reversed the portal, which started to suck all the demons back to the Twisting Nether. The Great Sundering, which would split the land of Kalendor, was starting to happen, but Illidan was still down on the ground together with Tyrande. Malfurion urged Ysera to dive down and pick them up, and they barely escaped the carnage. Brother, a timely arrival. Illidan! The well is out of control! Aye, it's been twisted and turned by too many spells. The fuss we, especially you, made with the portal was too much. The same spell that sent the Burning Legion back into their foul realm now works on the well. It's devouring itself and taking its surroundings with it. Fascinating, isn't it? Not if we're caught up in it. Why weren't you running? What have you been doing with your hand in the well? If you've a way out of here, we should probably use it. I've tried casting myself and Toronto out of here, but the well is too much in flux. This way. Queen Azara and a Highborn, they were not so lucky. They were caught by the waters, and although Azara tried to use a magic to keep the waters away, eventually they would be crushed. The old gods made contact with the queen, they offered her a deal, and they transformed them. They transformed Azara, they transformed her Highborn, they transformed Lady Vash, and they turned them into the Naga. On the mainland, the resistance had moved back all the way to Mount Hyjal. They were now led by Jared Shadowsong and they were trying to plan what to do next. A great lake was nearby with plenty of water to sustain them, but Illidan reached the lake first. He still had vials with water collected from the well and he poured three of them into the lake to create a new well of eternity. The Night Elves had just fought a war, lost countless lives because of the original well and they were not happy about this. They charged for Illidan, he lashed out against them, burned a few of them in their skin and he nearly killed Dathramar and Jared. Melfurion captured his twin and although the Night Elves wanted to execute Illidan for his crimes, Melfurion pleaded for his life so instead they decided to imprison him. Jared's sister, Maiev's Shadow Song, was more than willing to guard Illidan and make sure that this betrayer would never see the light of day again. The Dragon Aspects, they decided to turn this new Well of Eternity into a blessing and they planted the World Tree Nordrasil. They then blessed it with their own powers, they blessed the Night Elves, gave them eternal life while also saving them from the Well. Illidan told them that they were all fools, that one day they would all pray to him as if he were a god when the demons would return. Turn. The demons had had their first bite of Azeroth and they'd surely return for a second. When that moment would arrive, they would have need of his skill and knowledge, someone who knew how the Legion worked and how to stop them. And Illidan would be proven right. It took 10,000 years, but eventually the world would need Illidan's Storm Rage again. But that's a story for next week. For now, thank you very much for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed the story so far. Subscribe if you like my videos and until next time guys, see ya!